And then, with that, we're moving to a panel which will be interesting with Facebook, uh, with Sonico, and with MySpace. So can I call my, uh, uh, my guests here um, and uh, uh, move to the conversation? So we have Christopher Moser, who is uh, the managing director of MySpace. Really fast 
with respect to technology and, and, and the product. And one of the main things that we do is we leapfrog using specific things. For example, instead of developing a whole uh, video platform, we basically use YouTube from the start. Instead of using building out that we started out building out an IM, we eventually used Mevo. And we started using everything that is open source, and we started using cloud computing to have really low cost and structure. And uh, we continue on using as much as possible from from, from open source, and we just continue on building on, on top of this. And we're going to be opening it a lot in the next coming, coming months. So, of, of users that are actually older than 25 years old, and many people would think it would be a much younger crowd, but it isn't. It's been used as a platform for all ages in Latin America. And that's it. I just wanted to give a little context on, on, on something. Thank you very much. Great. Yeah, what, what, what do you, are you, are you um, a Facebook, a social user? Uh, yes, because... You use social media? Yes. Oh, really? Yes, because I have a, a lot of Argentinian friends, and they introduced me in, in that world of Sonico, but I use more Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you want to do Yes, and small world. Small world? Yes. So that's interesting. <laughs> Is it because you're more like uh, like a class, you know, private, uh, super <laughs> high end uh, style? No? I really don't like that. Well, I use more Facebook. And twenty in Spain because everybody in Spain has twenty. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so when you go on all of those four places, you update them all? I what? You update, you send an update to all? You no. No? I update more Facebook. Yeah, and twenty sometimes. And why Facebook more? Uh, I like, I prefer Facebook. It's more international and I have everybody there. Like everybody that has twenty has Facebook, so... You must be happy to hear that. Sponsors <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, that was all free rent. Uh, so, how is it? So, I'm going to talk about this for the time of Pablo. I would like to talk about Spanish, but I don't know if I can talk about English. So, I'll switch the same thing. No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, so, we were really happy with how the world is going. Uh, we recently announced that we passed 200 million users all over the world. And uh, when I joined the company about two years ago, it was a small company, only U.S., only in English. And on the course of, over the course of two years, we've launched over 57 languages and have seen incredible growth in other regions like Latin America, Asia, Europe. And uh, I think it's becoming a global platform for communication where you can stay in touch with friends all over the world in a more efficient way. So yeah, so far so good. So how is who is on Twitter? Yeah, because I mean, like, if you look at the panel, like, there is no Twitter in Spain, which I don't think is true at all, right? Okay, so. Who is on Facebook in the room? Who is on Facebook in the room? Right. Okay, who is on Facebook in the room? Well, that's tough because you're more in Latin America, so. But, um, he, like, there is a lot of competition with Twitter, right? Twitter has 20 million users, and that's where you work faster. So you put that more? No, last year we were uh, past 20 million, definitely. Uh, we, we were at 40 million in 2007, so we came from 40 right. all the way to 200. Is it because of growth rate? Yeah, no, so that's a big challenge. I, I hear your uh, founder, Mark Zuckerberg, is obsessed with Twitter. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, true about that. Uh, you know, I, we, I read bad books. You read bad books, probably that's the reason. Uh, no, but definitely. You know, we're focused into building a product that helps people communicate more efficiently, and a part of that is real-time communication. And I would agree, we have been done a lot of changes lately that facilitates that. And that's based on what we observe users doing in the platform. So with the old news feed, which was algorithmic, there were still three status updates at the top. And we tried to remove that, and users started complaining. And what we were seeing is people refreshing all the time their music because they wanted to see more news, more velocity. 
So that brought us to move to the screen, which is, you know, it's more similar to it in a way. I was about to say it, but yeah, said. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so next, next you you add uh, vanity names, right? Yeah. So you start doing Facebook.com slash yeah. Who got this slash name Facebook? You're at uh, 5 a.m. right here. <laughs> I thought about you so bad, you know, because that uh, 5 a.m. on a Saturday, wow, or 6, 6, six, 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 six. that was tough, and, and especially if you don't get it, uh, which happened to my wife, uh, but so you do that, that's another, and I hear since yesterday you're not seeing search, yeah, but I mean here's the thing, it's like if you look at the pipeline of projects that we have right now, it's, it's so big and we have so many things that we want to build, it's not that the ideas were in there, it's, you know, we have all of them, we're just like trying to implement as fast as possible. And we do things that other people have already implemented, but you know, some of the ideas have been already forever. It's just we haven't come to execute them. So it's not that revolutionary for concept. No, but you must be really upset when uh, something like happens like in Iran, like yesterday, and the entire worldwide press talks about how Twitter is changing the world, right? Uh, I mean, you know, we're definitely, you know, we're but basically really busy building the product, so we don't really have time to look at all the what's talking all about. But, you know, we definitely want to be a platform for global communication, and, and you know, we absolutely. So everything will be public. If you, you, I mean, you see, we're opening more and more APIs as fast as we can, obviously factoring the risks with certain APIs if you will open, but letting great partners like you build a great applications on top of Facebook or building my product. And I think that's a, that's a great... We pushed 8 million calls to Facebook yesterday. 8 million days from yeah. Sysmin desktops. So yeah. I know we have like, over, it's almost a million developers over 180 countries building applications on top of Facebook. Uh, not all of them are as good entrepreneurs as you. No. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, so this is why I was challenging you with Twitter. I think it's, to me, it's the most interesting year in the internet since really like the last 10, 15 years, is this, this like, huge presence you have now, obviously 200 million users, it's huge, and are you going to, you know, really challenge, move into becoming, you know, embracing Twitter by being, becoming part of the <coughs> that you need, right? You really need to let people a bit completely, and you, you are opening, and now all your social software are opening like, completely as well, so I hear MySpace is also, uh, for me, not here, but uh, walking in that direction. And for us, entrepreneurs and developers, it's fantastic because you can tap into this. And, uh, and yeah, you have one of the best APIs. Yeah. Uh, the API yeah, was there in 2006 already. The, the one that became really famous was the platform launched in 2007. And you know, we've been opening more and more and more APIs over time. And we think it's absolutely the right thing to open the product so that everybody can build on top of it. And, and that's how I think we have grown so quickly internationally because we have had developers all over the world building applications on top of Facebook and then they are localizing the product. In a very so localizing the product would give me a good opportunity here. Who, who will win? Localizing? Yes, how, because you address this in slides, but like you're in both. Do you think it's sustainable to go in Sony code because you have many Argentina friends and then also go to Facebook or do you think there will be someone who wins? Let's see what you think. You think you will stop? Would you like only one or you keep going like this? No, I will like it both. You want both? Yes, but uh, I don't know. I think in Spain wins, uh, for example, 20. I think more people have 20 than uh, my age. I don't know older, but for my age, more people have twenty than Facebook. I think the best example that you have today is that I mean you had Friendster that was huge, then MySpace that was huge, now Facebook is pretty big. Ten years ago you only had two companies that today are still as big as they were ten years ago. What I see is basically there's a, a, a continuous uh, innovation and adaptation to uh, human behavior using technology. So basically what you have is a very interesting moment where Twitter six months ago does not exist. So the truth is, uh, I think the only thing that really can keep you on the edge is con pushing continuously and improving the product continuously. So I don't think that necessarily there's going to be one winner because normally there isn't in any industry, especially when they're mainly open. You have a proof of that. You would, you would be dead already. If you exactly. Did. 
and uh, 20 is huge, and the front stems high block is huge, and they're not uh, they're not challenged too much. So, I mean, yeah, as a matter of fact, the reality is that there's a lot of networks coexisting, and people are using multiple networks. I still believe, though, there's an advantage of having one place where you can stay in touch with everybody, regardless of where they are. Uh, but that's that's my opinion. It's, it's, it's like, why would you have a telephone that only works in Spain, or, or, or only people are in Spain, where you could have another phone company? So you're saying you don't like No, I'm saying that that's a communication platform. Uh, Everybody has to open. Everyone has to open, and the more people that are they use That reminds me, when you work, you had come to serve on one side, that you could not send a mail to AOL, and you could not, you know, you remember that time, I'm sure some of you. That looks like the same. If I if I a little mail in, in Sonico, I cannot send it to Facebook, and, and it's the same with you, right? It's kind of... Uh, I would say that eventually you will be able to, and I think that that's a great part of this, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that uh, it's pretty open because I go to uh, an American university in Madrid, and there is a lot of <coughs> people from all around the world that come to know 20 because they live here and they start to, to get into 20. So I think it's kind of open. I think it will happen the same with Sonic on the social reds on uh, many places. <coughs> Is that uh, big? Your, your friends, your family, your co workers, people you randomly met, your, your business network are just being all put in together, right? And that's creating a problem. That really is creating a problem because you go out on, on a Friday night and you want to show some photos, but today it's really complicated to really separate all that. So I really believe that the social networks will evolve in changing very specific uh, privacy measures. And uh, I think we're and the identity of one person. I think the issue of where you're going to be, it's going to be where you want to dedicate time to have a public profile where you can share stuff to everybody, have a professional profile instead of having different sites all over, and just using one. And the majority of the people in the world are being connected right now in the brick countries. And those guys are coming in for the first time in life. And getting them with too many complicated things is also a big problem right now. We'll open for questions. Pablo, if you hear me, can you let me on stage because I have to run, unfortunately. But does this one have a question? Um, yes, you do. I think there is a. Can you see? Yeah, thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll leave you in a minute. Uh, but I, I think there is. I don't know if yourself if you don't think like this, but I'm really surprised that there is a huge open source of the uh, social uh, network. If you think about Twitter, there is Identica and Apolica, and I know Ivan is a friend, but it's not like we all thought it was going to be the WordPress of Twitter, and it doesn't like really, I mean, it grows, but it's not like WordPress. And, and there is a Facebook open source, and you're opening Facebook now, so I guess you're. We well, open a lot of open source projects like Haystack, Hive, a lot of the open source that we use in our own servers. Uh, we're definitely opening open source projects on the coding base, and obviously the APIs. Yeah, and I think it's a great opportunity for entrepreneurs that uh, are doing that. Uh, where was the question? Do you have a question? Hmm? No? Where was the question? Anybody? anybody? We're so boring. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, I'll leave you with this question, and yes. if you could continue. I'm sorry I need to jump in, in, in a plane of a friend, and uh, uh, I would like to congratulate you uh, again. Thank you very so much for coming and joining us. Thank, Thank you very much. Yo tengo una pregunta sobre eh, un tema que creo que no se tocó ahora en las redes sociales, que son los verticales específicos. Por ejemplo, yo como usuario eh, no quiero tener a la misma gente en Facebook y publico el mismo tipo de información ni quiero que transmita el mismo perfil sobre mí, la misma imagen sobre mí en Facebook que en LinkedIn. No sé qué, qué opinión eh, tenéis vosotros en el, en el panel sobre eso. Eh, bueno, una de las funcionalidades que hemos implementado recientemente en Facebook y que eh, menciono un poco este problema es los friendlies, las listas de amigos que te permiten por lo menos clasificar los contactos que tienen en Facebook en varios grupos. Lo que lo observamos es pues, que llegar a tu punto que no quieres compartir lo mismo con tu familia, 
con tu novio, novia, mujer, esposa, que con tus amigos, etcétera, etcétera. Y incluso si quieres tener un perfil profesional. No, de momento una cosa que no tenemos es la posibilidad de tener dos perfiles distintos, por ejemplo, dos fotos de perfil distintas para distintos grupos, pero sí que estamos teniendo un modelo que es eh, Privacy per Object, de forma que cualquier cosa que subas a Facebook, bien sea una foto, un álbum de fotos, un comentario, un note, puedas decidir qué grupo puede ver eh, ese tipo de información. Pero sí que hemos oído el feedback de que sería bueno poder tener una identidad de trabajo, una identidad personal. De nuevo, es una de esas, list una de esas funcionalidades que está en la lista de to-dos pero que todavía no hemos llegado a terminar. Nosotros no lo mismo, o sea, nosotros estamos yendo de alguna forma a tener tres perfiles, el público, el privado y el profesional. Hoy ya existe el perfil eh, profesional y como también la lista de, de, de prioridades de producto que hay, todavía estamos con, con varios cambios que vamos a estar lanzando en los próximos meses, pero que va a tratar de solucionar justamente eso, que realmente cuando quieras subir fotos, eh, puedas subir a un determinado perfil o si quieres compartir un estatus con, con alguien o todos y de esa manera realmente poder ser eficiente la manera de cómo compartís eh, contenido con la gente que quieres. Muy bien, eh, pregunta sí. 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 A ver, se ha ido a la Para Javier. Bueno, para todos un poco. Has dicho Javier que eh, Facebook es una herramienta de comunicación internacional, digamos, ¿no? Nosotros son más nichos, más en un estado o en un estado. Claro, pero de comunicación internacional, o sea, extra, o sea, pasas la barrera del estado, pero no pasáis la barrera de la lengua. Quiere decir, entre lenguajes, que es decir, el, el que habla en castellano se comunica con uno que habla en castellano, uno que habla en inglés con uno que habla en inglés, uno que habla en polaco con uno que habla en polaco, pero no pasáis la barrera del lenguaje. Estoy trabajando en algo que, que intente a través de la barrera del lenguaje. De momento lo que hemos hecho ha sido traducir el interfaz de usuario. Es decir, todos los menús, todo lo que es texto generado por Facebook, eso está disponible en 57 locales. Uh, lo que es el, el contenido generado por los usuarios se queda en el lenguaje en, lo, en el que ellos lo escriben. Eh, respecto a herramientas de traducción en tiempo real, lo que hemos visto es que de momento todavía no existe un, una herramienta de traducción en tiempo real automatizada que realmente de calidad lo suficientemente buena, con lo cual lo que sí que estamos pensando es en ver formas de que el usuario pueda generar su contenido en varios idiomas. Yo, por ejemplo, pues tengo muchos amigos en España, en Estados Unidos, entonces quizás si quiero, por ejemplo, hacer un post en dos lenguajes que lo pueda hacer y según en qué interfaz, según en qué lenguaje esté utilizando Facebook, que se vea en un idioma en el otro. Pero de momento todavía no no estamos llegando a eso porque sí que es verdad que la gente normalmente está interconectada con gente que habla su mismo idioma o por lo menos tienen un idioma común con el que se pueden comunicar. Pero, pero, pero también tiene un problema eso, ¿no? Porque empiezas a tener una contaminación del viaje social, o empiezas a tener combinación, o sea, hay un fanpage de, de X persona o lo que sea y empiezas a tener un vietnamita, un chino, un americano, un argentino y se empiezan a intermezclar y después empiezas a tener complicaciones digamos, con respecto a la relevancia ¿no? en tu grupo. Y ese es un problema que va surgiendo, además del idioma. Pues, aunque es relativamente fácil de solucionar porque puedes poner filtros de contenido. Es decir, yo solo quiero ver contenido en los dos o tres idiomas que hago. Entonces con eso podrías filtrar fuera. De forma que cuando ves un fanpage no ves el contenido en 100 lenguajes distintos de los cuales no entiendes 90. Yes. Eh, aquí, sí. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Eh, yo te quería preguntar, eh, ¿las cifras de, son oficiales o no de Facebook Connect? Es decir, ¿cuántas empresas se han ya inscrito en Facebook Connect? ¿Cómo está yendo? Y si tenéis que estar es donde realmente el negocio de esas empresas que están en Facebook Connect haya mejorado significativamente. El número exacto, el número Facebook no funciona en el marketing a veces, entonces, ¿cómo lo puedes tú convencer de que el marketing sí funciona en Facebook? El número exacto de implementaciones ahora no, es que no, no lo tengo en la cabeza, pero está creciendo a, a la velocidad del rayo. En España, por ejemplo, está la información.com, esclipo.com, eh, que han hecho implementaciones de Connect en Estados Unidos, Dig, TechCrunch um, y YouTube acaba de anunciar. Eh, les está yendo, por lo que nos han comentado, 
Muy bien, por ejemplo, a mí ando que es eh, también el primer pan que implemento Conecta en Europa y lo usa para vender tickets de una forma viral. Porque eso es un canal de distribución gigante, porque cualquier contenido, cualquier acción que los usuarios toman en tu website la pueden compartir con sus amigos en Facebook y vía el stream te genera mucho tráfico de vuelta, con lo cual es un canal de distribución gratuito y muy efectivo. Así que sí, están muy contentos porque les está volviendo mucho tráfico de vuelta. Muy bien, la última pregunta. Allí el fondo. Hola, para ti también sobre Facebook. Un poco lo que estoy yo viendo ahora es que hay mucha gente que ya está con mucho miedo. De, no quiero subir fotos a Facebook. No entiendo cómo tú puedes subir fotos a Facebook, yo lo hago, pero como que cada vez hay más reticencia a tema de privacidad, eh, pero hay gente que es gente de, de, de internet para muchas cosas. ¿Cómo estáis viendo este fenómeno y qué podéis hacer para eh, asegurar un poco que la gente se sienta más cómoda? O sea, el tema de privacidad es un tema muy amplio, pero yo la forma que lo, me gusta verlo de una forma sencilla es privacidad para mí es poder controlar tu información, quién tiene acceso y quién puede verla. O sea, es, y eso tiene muchos componentes, que es por una parte que el usuario entienda cuando sube una pieza de contenido quién va a poder verla, que tenga control y sea sencillo entender quién va a poder ver sus fotos, por ejemplo. Pues para eso estamos implementando funcionalidades como los friendlies, las listas de amigos que te permite quiero este álbum no subo y solo lo puede ver mi familia, pero nadie más. Solo lo pueden ver mis amigos o mis amigos y amigos de mis amigos. O solo eh, estos amigos, pero no mi mujer, por ejemplo. Eh, eh, así que, sí, lo que hay cosas que no se pueden evitar es, eh, pero es un poco la naturaleza de Internet. Alguien puede montar un website, subir una foto que tú no quieres que esté y creo que es peor que si es en Facebook, porque si es una foto que realmente es contenido que o viola las condiciones de uso, puedes contactar y lo removemos. Bueno, genial. Bueno, es interesantísimo esto, pero lamentablemente tenemos que seguir. Así que muchísimas gracias Javier, Rodrigo, por estar con nosotros. Nos vemos.